Hi everyone, my name is Joseph and this is the first in a series of videos uh, where we're going to look at how to get up and running with the Crumble controller. So the Crumble is this little programmable board here. We've got four inputs and outputs where you can connect switches, lights, LEDs. You can connect different types of sensors to these inputs um, and you can actuate servos which are a special kind of motor where you can change position to a particular angle. Uh, so the Crummel also has a built-in motor driver, so you can connect uh, up to two motors directly to the Crummel. So you can have buggies, um, wind turbine models, etc. First of all, we're going to look at uh, the starter kit and which parts you get in there and go through them one by one. So, uh, we'll open the box. Inside we've got a uh, battery box uh, with a switch on it, and it also has a little short circuit warning on there, which is really useful. And that will power our projects. Uh, we've got the USB lead we need to program the crumble with. Uh, one set of uh, crock leads to connect everything together. Um, we've got a packet with our um, crumbles and sparkles in. And so we've got the crumble itself and then two of the sparkle LEDs. And then we also get um, a push button, a buzzer, and a light sensor. So the first project uh, that we will program uh, is going to use the crumble and the sparkles to make a simple flashing police car lights. Uh, so before we get started we need to go to the website and download the software. Going to go to uh, Redfern Electronics and then if you go to crumble and crumble software you can see that you can download the software for Windows, Mac or Linux from this website. So if you download it and install it like you would normally, um, the drivers are all inbuilt and everything, so you should just be ready to go once the software is installed. To power the crumble, we need to connect the battery pack to the plus and minus on the top of the crumble. So I'm gonna take my battery pack here and some crock leads. And connect them. So conventionally, we tend to try and use uh, red wires for plus and black wires for minus. So I'm going to connect a red wire from plus on the battery pack to plus on the crumble. And a black wire from minus on the battery pack to minus on the crumble. And then I can get my batteries in. So the battery box. Uh, you'll notice on this battery box there's a switch here so we can switch the power on and off. And we've also got two lights, so there's a, a power light, so if I flick the power on you get a green light. Uh, there's also a light called short, and um, this battery pack has a safety short circuit in it. So if you accidentally short the connections out, instead of getting really hot that LED there will go red and it will cut power to the crumble. Um, which is really important when you're using this with young kids um, to stop any accidents happening. So once I've connected my battery pack to the crumble, uh, for this experiment, well, <laughs> project, I'm going to connect a sparkle to the crumble. So the sparkles need power too, so I'm going to connect plus and minus from the sparkle to plus and minus on the crumble, and the power from the battery pack will go through the crumble, power the crumble, and then come out and power the sparkle as well. So I'm going to use red for plus again. Um, you don't have to use red, but if you stick to a kind of a system, it means you can more clearly see what you're doing. And black for minus. And we need one extra connection to this LED because it's a, a, a special um, programmable LED, so it needs a data connection. Um, and there's a D written on the bottom of the sparkle here, and a D written on the crumble. So I'm going to use a, a green wire um, to connect D from the crumble to D on the sparkle. You'll also notice that there's an arrow on the sparkle which is the direction the data is going so you all, always need to connect to the uh, side of the arrow so data is coming in. Um, so that's my basic project set up first so I'll put that here and then I'm going to take my USB cable and connect the crumble to the computer. Like so. So I'm now ready to program my um, crumble. Okay, so I've launched the crumble software on my computer. 
um, and you can see on the left here I've got loads of blocks which are my commands and I've got a few buttons on the top. Uh, this green one here sends the program to the crumble and this red one stops it. Uh, this one here is an undelete so if you accidentally delete some blocks you can rescue them. So my very first program I'm going to do the simplest thing I can possibly do. So I'm going to grab a program start block and you always need one of these to tell the crumble where your program is starting. And then I'm going to grab this set sparkle block here. And you can see it says set sparkle 0, 2, and then there's a red box. Now the red box is the colour I want the light to be. So I click on that box, I can change the colour. So I'm going to pick a nice greeny colour. And sparkle 0 is actually the address of the sparkle. So 0 is the first sparkle connected to the crumble. I can actually connect more sparkles in a chain to this sparkle and they'll become one, then two, then three, then four, etc. And you can have them all different colours at different times. So if I turn my battery pack on and then run this program by pressing the play button, you can see the sparkle goes green, as my program told it to. So to build on that, we want to have our flashing red and blue light. So I'll go back to my program. So we've got our simple program that sets the sparkle to green and now we want to change it to go between red and blue. So first things first, we'll change that green to a nice red. And then we want to wait a period of time. So I'm going to drag a wait block in there and it says wait one second at the minute. So I want it to be quite a fast flash. So I'm going to go wait 0.5 seconds. And then after 0.5 seconds, I want to change that sparkle. Instead of being red, I would like it to be blue. So if I just test this program now, I can see uh, if I run it, it'll go red and then it will go blue. And then it's, it's finished, so it'll just stay there forever. So I'm going to stop that program. And what we want to use now is a construct called a loop, so it can repeat those blocks over and over. So down here, there's a loop called loop forever. If I drag that right to the top of my program and then put my blocks inside, it will now repeat these commands over and over and over and over again. Now there's a little problem with my program. If I run it now, we can see that it's staying red. And what's actually happening is it's setting it red, waiting half a second, setting it blue, but then immediately go back to the top of the loop and setting it red again. So we just need to add in one more block half a second wait again and if I run that now we've got our flashing red and blue light it's that simple okay so now we've got our single sparkle flashing between red and blue we're going to try and attempt to add the second sparkle in so as I said before you can chain sparkles together so all I need is three more leads I'm going to use my uh, red lead for the plus again so plus on the first sparkle on the other side into plus on the second sparkle and then black lead for negative or minus so that's the power connected from the first sparkle to the second sparkle and then I'm going to use another green lead for my data connection and again I'm just checking got the arrow the right way around on the uh, sparkle <clears throat> okay so I've got my two sparkles connected and now if I do a quick program, what I'm going to do is move uh, my existing program just over here for a minute so I can do a little experiment. So I'm going to so drag a set sparkle block in again, set sparkle zero to red. <clears throat> so let's send that and the first sparkle in the chain, which is sparkle zero, has gone red as we programmed. And I'm going to add another sparkle block directly under that I'm going to change that zero to one. So now this sparkle command is addressing the next sparkle. So let's tell that one to be blue. If I run this program now, I've got a red light and a blue light. <clears throat> so now what I want to do, I want to do my siren or police lights again, and I want them to alternate. So I'm going to do almost the same program as before. Um, but instead of setting one sparkle, I'll set both at the same time. So I might add a wait block in again, 0.5 seconds. So because there's no wait in between these first two sparkle commands, you can think of them as happening exactly the same time instantaneously. 
um, and then I'm going to do a little trick. I'm going to right click on the first line and say duplicate and I get a copy of my whole program there and I can quickly add that underneath and then I'm going to swap this one zero to one and one to a zero and then put all of that inside a loop. So this is almost the same program we had at the beginning but I've added in the extra sparkle wand commands and then we'll send that to the crumble and there we have our alternating lights. Okay, another feature of the crumble is that once it's programmed, you can actually unplug it from the computer and it's now, it has that program in its brain. So if I turn the, pro the crumble off and turn it on again, it runs the last program you sent. So if this was embedded in a display or a project, um, it will continue to run that program whenever the crumble is turned on. As well as chaining individual sparkles together, which you can do across a display or some kind of model, you can also get um, sparkle buttons where you've got eight sparkles in a row, so you can do gauges and things like that on here. We've got a sparkle matrix, um, which is a five by five grid, so you can do symbols, happy faces, sad faces, arrows, all that kind of thing. And really good for coding challenges as well. And we've got some flexible sparkle strip, which is great for embedding into costumes, even in the school play and you can do some real cool effects with this one. Okay, so in the last section of this video, uh, we're gonna take a look at some basic inputs and outputs. So we're gonna focus on the parts we got in the Crumble Starter Kit, and we're also gonna look at some standard LEDs as well. So one of the important concepts to understand before um, using uh, digital inputs and outputs is that in digital electronics, you represent on or off, or one or zero, or high or low, as we describe it in the Crumble software, uh, with a high voltage, which is 4.5 volts, or five volts in our case, or a low voltage, which is zero volts. So you'll see in the software that the blocks that we can control the inputs and output pins, A, B, C, and D with, um, set A high, and we can change um, the actual pin we're referring to, and that's a high or low. And this block here also, A is high or A is low. And that allows us to test to see if a pin is either high or low, or five volts or zero volts. Okay, so let's use the buzzer first. Um, we'll see on the buzzer that we've got a plus and a minus. So it's important that we're aware that this buzzer will only work one way around. It won't get damaged either way, but we have to get it correct for it to work. So what we're gonna do, uh, if we connect these plus and minus directly to the crumble plus and minus, then the buzzer is just going to be on all the time, which is no, no fun at all. So what we're going to do is we're going to connect the minus to the power supply minus on the crumble, effectively to the minus on the batteries, but we're going to connect the plus, um, in this case, to output C, and we'll be able to change C from high to low to turn the buzzer on and off. So the first thing we're going to do is, as before, connect the battery box up to the crumble. So we take, uh, I'm going to stick with my oh, red and black wire convention. So I'll go from positive on the battery box and negative on the battery box uh, to positive and negative on the crumble. Uh, and then I'm going to connect my buzzer. So I'm going to use another black lead for negative to the negative on the buzzer. And then I'm going to take a yellow lead uh, from C and connect that to positive on the buzzer and basically by changing the value of C we can effectively power the buzzer we're effectively making C the positive or the negative uh, so now we've connected everything up we can uh, go to the software uh, and we can make a quick program to see if we can get the buzzer to pulse on and off so um, we're going to use the set block for that um, so I'm going to drag this program start block on. Uh, we've got our buzzer connected to C, so I'm going to change this to C. So we're going to set C high, which should turn the buzzer on, because it effectively means that uh, C will go to a high voltage. And we've got the other side of uh, the buzzer connected to negative. Uh, and then we will add a weight block in, another set C block, so we'll set C low, and then wait one second again, and we put all of that inside a loop, like so. 
So when we run this program and we've got our power turned on, we should be able to hear the buzzer pulsing. So it's possible to power low power devices like buzzers, um, small LEDs directly from the crumble outputs. Um, the LEDs can be connected directly just like the buzzer. So if I take a, a standard LED, um, I can connect that to uh, the long leg is positive. So I'm going to get the short leg to negative, long leg to positive. And then if I run the software again, you should see that will pulse on and off. One thing to be aware of is we haven't got a current limiting resistor in this circuit. And if you've used LEDs before, you know that's important to stop the LED burning out. The crumble does actually have current limiting built onto its A, B, C and D outputs. If I connect this LED directly to a battery box, it, it will go pop. OK, so that's basically how we can use simple outputs just to turn them on and off with the crumble. Similarly, we can use those pins A, B, C and D as digital inputs. And depending whether we make that pin a high voltage or a low voltage, uh, we can sense that. So if nothing is connected, that pin will always read low. So this block in the software here that says A is high will basically only be true if you have A is low. But if we connect A, for example, to positive, it will then change that input from low to high. So what we can do is slightly differently to the buzzer, we can connect the switch between positive and the input to sense it. So I'm going to grab a red lead and I'm going to take another positive off the battery um, to one side of the switch. And then uh, let's do another yellow lead. No, let's do a green lead um, from the other side of the switch to A. So when I'm not pressing the switch, there's no uh, route through for the positive connection of the battery to get to A, but when I press it, it will complete the circuit as it were, and A will go high. So in the software, um, we can use this block here to detect that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this block called wait until, and this waits until something is true. So if I put my block in there, and say wait until A is high, and put that right at the start of my program before the loop, when I run my program, the buzzer won't sound at all now, but if I start and press the button, the program carries on into the loop. So the last thing we will look at in this video is the light sensor that you get in the starter kit. Uh, this is actually a photo transistor. Um, as, uh, you can use LDRs as well, but um, they're being phased out because they contain cadmium. Uh, so we can connect this very similar way to the switch. We can connect the uh, positive side of the light sensor to the battery pack and then we can connect the negative side to we'll go for input A again. So we've got our light sensor connected now and when light falls on the light sensor uh, it will allow current to flow from the battery pack from the plus of the battery pack into A changing A from low to high which we can detect in the software. We've already got a sparkle connected um, on this side, so we can use this to make a simple night light. So in the software, uh, we can write a quick program um, to constantly check the status of A and change the sparkle. So slightly different to the last program, we won't be waiting. We can, we'll be constantly looping and checking um, the status of A. Uh, so I'll start with a program start block uh, and then a loop. And this time we'll want to use the if else um, statement uh, because that will allow us to do um, turn the sparkle on or turn it off. So we can uh, check the status of A in the top of our if statement. So we say if A is high, now I know if A is high, that means light is landing on the sensor um, because it will allow um, current to flow and A will go from low to high. Uh, so when A is high, we want our light to go off. It's daytime, so we don't need our night light on. So I will use the, um, I could use the set sparkle off block or turn sparkle off block. So as before, sparkle zero is the first one in the chain, so it's this one. And then if it is nighttime, we can turn the sparkle on and we can have a nice calming uh, yellow color. Okay. So if I run this program now, 
uh, light is landing on the center, so our sparkle is off. And if I plunge that into darkness, uh, the light turns on. Okay, so that covers pretty much all the basics you need to know to get started with the Crumble controller and embed it in some projects. And there's some links uh, in the information attached to this video um, where you can see how to do some projects. Um, in the next uh, session, which will be the Crumble Intermediate session, we'll be covering um, sensors, uh, like the light sensor as well, where you can actually use them as an analog input and get values. And we'll be using variables and maths in the software uh, to do some more advanced things. Uh, so thanks for watching and to see you soon.